where you're really struggling. It is a very, very, very difficult art form that takes a lot of work and has nothing to do with all of this. He worries today, Vasiliu, that uh, the popular music scene is not taking a much, uh, a much better direction than it was in the 1980s. And as was mentioned in our introduction, that when a pop singer sings about love or about pain, you're not really quite sure whether you should believe that the singer is feeling everything that the singer is feeling, which is something that is very significant in the Betico performance. <coughs> so, Vasilio would call his club, his tavern, Rebetiki Historia, which means Rebetika History. And here he would offer live Rebetika performance, and as he mentioned, as I mentioned in his quotation, it would be a type of school devoted to educating the Greek youth about traditional Greek music. He met with astounding success. In the late 1980s and the early 1990s, Rebetiki Historia filled every night to capacity and people waited in a line that stretched down the street to get a table. Now, 30 years later, the situation has changed a bit. And Vasiliu's message rings truer than ever. The state of the economy has left people with little money to spend on entertainment. As Vasiliu watches his fellow Greeks struggle to make ends meet, he is filled with renewed urgency in his mission to save Greek culture but it is also coupled with a sense of despair. After so many years, Rebetica songs, with their messages about social and economic injustice, well, they are more relevant than ever before. Vasiliu's sentiments seem to be shared by many Greeks. Some Greeks take to the streets in protest of the situation. Many express anger towards governing politicians, and we see a rather facetious uh, cartoon from the newspaper on the top right, in which uh, Papa Breu was literally stealing money from, from his fellow Greeks and to hand over to the European Union, which is represented, obviously, by our friend Mirko. Um, so very, very strong sentiments, a lot of anger being expressed uh, about the situation. Many feel that the burden of the crisis has been placed in the hands of the Greek people who do not have the means with which to fix the situation. Uh, one jeweler expressed his despair to the uh, Reuters newspaper. There is no helping hand from the government, he said. There is only one hand, the one that presses our heads, presses on our heads and pushes us further to the ground. So I felt that quotation really expressed the general sentiment. So let us turn now to Vasilio's specific rabbinical performance. During the three years that I spent in the Rebetiki Historia as patron, musician, and ethnomusicologist, I observed that his performance played a much greater role than entertainment, that it has taken on new meaning in these troubled times. It truly helps his fellow musicians and audiences alike navigate the difficult socioeconomic times. And it does so in three basic ways. First, it provides a type of safe haven from the worries of everyday life. In the Rebetic Historia, there is an overwhelming atmosphere of friendship and camaraderie. The average customer recognizes this feeling even before the music starts. Vasiliu consistently maintains the lowest prices of any Athens Rebetavigo, and he gears the entertainment towards the Greek youth, towards the student, towards the working class. He has been known to buy drinks for customers who cannot afford them, and he is always more than generous with musicians and staff. Rebetik Yusoria seems to exist outside this culture of corruption and favor trading that seems to dominate so much of Greece. And he treats all of his patrons with equal respect and does not distinguish between his customers. On occasion, well-known politicians and television personnel have asked Vasiliu to have a table ready at their disposal whenever they should show up to Rebetik Yusoria. Vasiliu always responds in the same way. Call me a few days in advance and reserve a table. I don't distinguish between my patrons. Feelings of friendship and camaraderie are emphasized in other ways as well. <coughs> the patrons become friends with the musicians and often engage in prolonged and often heated conversations that almost always seem to concern the state of contemporary Greece. Many of the same people attend the Rebetiki Historia week in and week out and become regular customers. 
They sit in the same corner of the tavern at their same table and make the same song requests from the musicians. And the musicians are more than willing to play, play these requests and even remember which songs their patrons like to listen to and to dance to before they make the request. The second way that Vasilius Rebetigo performance helps Greeks navigate these troubled times is the way in which he frames the performance and the way in which he frames Rebetigo. In Rebetik Yistoria, there exists what one might call a shared semiotic web of meaning, which just means that musicians and patrons alike interpret songs in similar ways. This element was readily vis visible to me, initially a complete stranger to this contemporary Rebetiko culture. For example, Vasilius' Rebetiko narrative rings true with many of his customers, for he tells the history of Rebetica as the, mus the history of a music of an innocent people. The musicians, like the music, were persecuted unfairly. They struggled economically, and they were harassed for their way of life and for the music that they played. The contemporary listener hears his troubles echoed in the song, in these words, and he feels that he is not alone in his words. Rebetica songs, written about one century ago, take on new meaning as they resonate with contemporary troubles. For example, on one occasion, Vasiliu argued with a patron about whether the Rebetiko genre had died. The patron proposed that Rebetiko songs were antiquated, that they had died during the 1950s when so many changes were made to the music. Vasiliu disagreed. Died? Who told you such a thing? No, my friend. Rebetika has not died and cannot die, as long as Greece remains the country that it is. Rebetika songs are very much alive, and might I add, they ring truer today than they did 100 years ago. To prove his point, he sang the song, The Wallet, by Marcos Babacaris. The song begins, in today's world, everyone knows, a man's strength lies in his wallet. If they learn that you have a wallet in your pocket, they will tell you that you're a gentleman, that you're just right, and so on. To Vasiliu, Rebetika is not music for casual listening or for the oral backdrop of a night of wild dancing, and he makes his opinion known. Rather, audiences should maintain continual and appropriate interaction with the live music performance. Accepted behaviors include sitting quietly, and listening to the music, clapping or singing along with the songs, talking to friends, dancing to certain songs in certain ways, and drinking one's beverage. By requiring such utmost respect, Vasiliu signals to his audiences the great worth of Rebetika. He often refuses to fulfill song requests that lie outside of his understanding of the Rebetika genre, and he is not shy to admonish an audience member for disrespectful behavior. As a rule, he rejects outright the newer Rebetic culture that began to form in the 1950s. Let us take a moment now to listen to uh, Rebetic Historia perform a beautiful improvisation, uh, a traditional improvisation from a Asia Minor called the Good Night uh, Improvisation, first um, recorded in 1929. Now, I'm not going to play your recording from Rebet Gisoria because the lighting is always so low and there's always noise distortion. So I will play you an excerpt instead from a performance uh, that the band uh, played in, at uh, the University of Michigan in uh, 2011. So you see Pavos Vasiliu is uh, the singer in the middle. And Vagelis Nikolaidis, who had the quotation in the beginning, is the guitarist on the right. So I'll let you listen to a couple of minutes of, of this. <laughs>
to uh, translate the lyrics for you, but Ach, the time has come, aman, aman, woe is me, for me to open my mouth and to my good friends to say my final goodbye. So, very, very heavy. <laughs> And finally, the third way that Rebetica helps people deal with the economic difficulties, musical catharsis. The music provides a way for people to relieve the burden of their worries, even if just for a few hours. And how does it do this? Well, in numerous ways. Of course, there is the old saying that misery loves company, which seems to apply very well here. For there is a certain relief that one feels when surrounded by people who experience similar worries and who express these worries in song and in conversation. But perhaps the most powerful way of all is by dancing, which is a fundamental element of Rebetico enjoyment. There are some moments of the Rebetico night that call for great dancing, rapid dancing at a rapid pace. Groups of friends and strangers gather in a circle and dance to various rhythms. Aided by the warmth of their drink, the dancers often dance until they cannot dance anymore, and they return to their tables, exhausted but smiling. But the most common Rebetico dance is a very different dance, and this is the Zebetico. Vasilio <coughs> claims that this is the only true Rebetico dance, it is a solo dance, an improvisational dance, meaning that there are no set steps to the dance, but there are characteristic movements. You can't just do whatever you want. The Zebekiko should be danced slowly, even when the musicians play at a fast tempo. Vasilio often directs his customers, the faster the music, the slower the dance. Ethnomusicologist Bachni Dravaki des describes the Zebekiko dance in the following way. Zepetico is a celebration of masculinity danced in movements and gestures, expressing an authoritative yet introspective performance <coughs> of pain and self-contained pride. Today, of course, women dance the Zepetico as well. Uh, I can show you a brief clip of a uh, dancer in the Historia. Again, as I mentioned earlier, it's very dark and rather noisy, but you will uh, you will get the idea. The dancer walking to the floor, he bends at the waist, he looks at his feet, he seems to be intensely troubled, and you see there are points in the, in the dance, but along with the music, everything seems to be moving sort of at the same pace, and you see this, well, I'll let you watch, rather than describing it to you, how's that? I'll talk to you about it afterwards. All right, so if somebody could just uh, maybe dim the lights because it's a very, very dark, um, very dark video. Just for this two minutes. And you'll see this is a dance, a Zebekko, that's actually for two people. So if you can just make out the two shadowy figures here dancing. <laughs> Well, Vasilio described the Zebekiko 
the following way. It is a dance that characterizes the man that is lost in a psychological state crea created by the sounds of the instruments, the lyrics, and the rhythms. The dancer many times feels that he wants to take off, to fly, not to step on the earth. He believes he is alone in the world, and like another atlas, he carries on his troubles, uh, excuse me, he carries on his shoulders all the troubles and worries of the world. He wants, with one movement, to throw off all that which weighs on him. The dancer has self-respect. He has rules. Even when he has had too much to drink, he respects those around him. Rarely does he bother anyone else. Mainly, he is lost in his own thoughts and in his own psychological world. So just to conclude briefly, if there is one thing that you will take away from this lecture, I'm sure the details of the history of the sound, the structure of the songs will most likely fade away. But I hope that something else remains, and that is a greater sensitivity to music in your surrounding. We are so used to hearing music everywhere we go. We are constantly mirage by music. You know, the, the iPod shuffle is a, is a wonderful thing. You can hear music from China, then the next song you can hear from Brazil, and then you can hear blues from Chicago, and then a Beethoven symphony, and you don't think anything of it. But actually, the effect of us having all this music at our fingertips is that the music becomes, we interpret many different musics in very similar ways, without thinking in what context is this music performed, who is performing it, why, what does it mean for the performers, what does it mean for the listeners. So I hope I've made somewhat clear that contrary to the way in which Robetiga is normally presented in Greece as songs of the underworld or songs about hashish, which only a very small handful actually are, uh, that the music actually serves very significant roles for Greeks today and intersects with their everyday lives. So, thank you. This evening. I hope you'll be able to join us for a little glass of wine back here. Hello, yes.